you all for coming. I'm Ross Bigley, the uh, founder and festival director of Milwaukee Short Film Festival, and the gentleman in the back in the plaid shirt is Bill Kornbach. He's a co-festival director as well. Um, this panel is about getting your films ready for film festivals and some tips that you can learn from it and maybe some information that can help you navigate as you're moving forward. We have from the Milwaukee Underground, uh, Hugo Youngback. Did I pronounce you correctly? Yes. Okay. Nelson Oliveras from Voices Heard. Christopher House from Milwaukee Twisted Dreams Film Festival. Stephen Millick from Milwaukee Twisted Dreams Film Festival. And Craig Pinnett from Wildwood Film Festival. I think the next thing we ought to do is want each of you just briefly talk about your festival for those who might not know about your festival here in the audience. Do you want to go ahead? Uh, sure. Uh, so the Milwaukee Underground Film Festival is hosted every April uh, in uh, River West and uh, Upper East Side. Uh, it's a student-run festival uh, hosted by the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee's Film Department. Uh, it's run as a class but also as a student organization and basically uh, we run from first day through um, Sunday, uh, we have an opening screening at uh, Union Cinema, and then the rest is hosted off campus. Uh, we have about uh, seven or eight uh, shorts programs with filmmakers from around the world. Uh, a lot of them are, uh, you know, in the Midwest or fairly close enough that they can come visit and uh, be present for the <coughs> festival. Uh, what we screen is mostly experimental film, uh, art film, video art, uh, underground film, basically. Uh, which is kind of like non-mainstream or uh, non-fiction, uh, not much narrative film, um, yeah. UWM um, is part of this, or an or you're an organization from it, and they're more of an experimental film school, so that, yes, that explains exactly. part of the programming exactly. of that. Yeah. Nelson? Uh, so we do, uh, work on Voices Heard. Uh, Voices Heard is the uh, only a local multicultural uh, film uh, festival that we have here in Milwaukee. We take films from people of color, people from uh, Latino or any ethnicity that we can really get our hands on. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, we run. We're right now we're part of the Milwaukee Short Film Festival. We are working on trying to expand, but um, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. We have, Christopher and Stephen, do you want to talk about your yeah, festival? Go for it. You explain it better. All right. So yeah, with Twisted Dreams Film Festival, um, pretty much uh, focused on horror or macabre. Um, like the, you know, anything twisted, anything disturbing, um, uh, anything like that. We do have uh, features and uh, short programs. Um, we have we're in uh, usually the beginning of April, um, 2019. It's going to be April 5th to 7th, three days. Um, so. Yeah, mostly, you know, horror, twisted, you know, stuff that's going to scare you or just warp your mind. That's kind of what we like to do. Yeah, occasionally, so sci-fi there, too. Uh, sci a little bit of yeah. sci-fi, you know, sci-fi horror, any kind of <coughs> horror. We like to think of horror film as uh, encompassing many different genres. Like, anything can be scary. Um, you know, you can have a documentary that can be scary or... So, we like to incorporate not just your traditional horror film, but um, any kind of horror that uh, is out there. Anything can be horror in the right sense. So we like to try to have all that uh, shown at the festival. And your Milwaukee Underground was, what? when was that taking place? Uh, April. April. So are you taking submissions? Uh, we will be opening our uh, submissions in about a month. And you're taking submissions? Yeah, we're currently submissions are submissions. up now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wisconsin filmmakers submit free. Yeah. All right. And Craig Kinnett is from Wildwood. How long has Wildwood been around? Um, Wildwood, the very first Wildwood event that we had started in 2000. And we had made a feature film that we really were trying to get seen in the state. And at that time, the only festival that really was around was the Wisconsin Film Festival down in Madison. And it was so hard to get things in because they had such a limited amount of Wisconsin's own window open. And a lot of film fest or a lot of filmmakers whose work was being ignored and not seen was not getting a chance to get an audience. So we really took it upon ourselves to kind of start a festival that was dedicated 100% to Wisconsin film talent. 
And um, we've been going now, this is going to be our eighth, 19th year, when we're hoping to make it to 19 or 20. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, we're going fairly strong. Um, we also are advocates for the art of filmmaking in the state and really trying to get people recognized for what, what they're doing at <coughs> whatever level they're at. Your film festival is purely Wisconsin. Yeah, I think I think, or I think we're the the only festival in the world that can kind of make that claim is that we're every film that we've showcased for the last 18 years has a direct connection to the state of Wisconsin. We've got a lot of Milwaukee pieces. Ross, you've had several pieces in our festival. We've got a lot of Milwaukee representation in the festival. But then we'll also get people that have been in Wisconsin, went to school in Wisconsin, grew up in Wisconsin, but they're now working in LA. And so their films count just as well. Um, we've had a film that, one probably one of the most unique films that we had was written, uh, the writer is from Appleton, and it was shot in Australia. And so the writer was at our festival, and, and uh, he had nothing to do at all with the production of the film, but it was his words and his ideas on the screen, so it was very kind of interesting. And you're taking submissions now still? We, we um, every film festival in the state of Wisconsin slid their submission window up a whole month, it seemed, because it's so hard to program a festival and that you're always running into deadlines. So what we ended up doing, is we slid our deadline up as well, but now we're realizing we need to extend it a little bit further. So we, our, yeah. our deadline was last the end of last month, but now it's the end of this month. Okay. So you guys still have a chance to get in. <coughs> yeah, uh, we, we uh, at our festival, we don't, we, we have to stay on our deadline because of the uh, production thing, but we're actually moving our deadline up next year, just because we need more of a, yeah. You know, post production time to, to gather everything. It's out. very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Give these guys all an applause. They <laughs> are really doing their work for you guys. I think maybe that. And me too. Maybe <laughs> because we're talking about timelines, maybe the next thing instead of how, the, how we program it is the EPK. What a filmmaker needs to know when they're setting their film in because when you're. Um, Notifying the filmmakers, I've run into situations where the filmmaker might not know what an EPK is. An EPK is electronic press kit. And um, we don't make it mandatory. A lot of filmmakers don't make it mandatory. I mean, film festivals don't make it mandatory. But when um, I think it's essential that a, a filmmaker knows what's kind of expected with that. Um, a lot of times if a filmmaker has a photo, it's, it's a still frame from their image and it's lower res and it's harder to use to duplicate. Um, any thoughts on an EPK? I certainly got a lot of advice because I know, Ross, that you have made press kits for some of your filmmakers when they've come in before. I've done the same thing. Yeah, but some we, people we don't send that in. And think of it from a professional standpoint. Most of the people that are sending in entries from um, LA who are in the business now, who are former Wisconsinites, they know what a press kit is. They'll put the pictures in there. They'll have a, a couple of cell choices from the film, you know, really nice still shots from the movie. They'll also have some production film or shots that I've never used one, and, um, <clears throat> but it's nice to see that in the event that you want to take some of their information and put it into the local newspaper. Yeah. And all of a sudden you've got a photograph that can go into, you know, to represent them. You yeah. know, it also helps to, you know, uh, bring the, like a director's bio or a filmmaker's bio as well. A filmmaker's headshot. A filmmaker's see, headshot. If a, if a news organization contacts us and wants some information about a film, <coughs> we have that information to send that news organization. Um, when I was doing press last week and the week before, the local TV station was like, well, what do you have? You know, and a lot of times I would have to generate that material and send it to them. Um, if we have that material ready, I could just quickly, just on a click, just send it to them. And news organizations really like behind the scenes photos. One, one of the things too is that 
the, the, the affiliates, the newspapers, the, the local news, they don't want to tell a story about the Milwaukee Short Film Festival. They want to tell a story about the Wildwood Film Festival. They want to tell an individual story about you, the filmmaker, and your struggle to make that movie. Yeah. Well, where can they see that film? At the Wildwood Film Festival, at the Milwaukee Short Film Festival. You know, so they're going to pull you in as this topic, this, this uh, humanizing topic that uh, everybody wants to learn about, and that's, I think, great. Yeah. The, if, the, if the news outlet contacts you, it's mostly human interest, um, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great, because it brings more attention to your film as well. Um, any more thoughts on, on an EBK? Um, basically, a poster is good. A high-res poster. Uh, about 600 DPI, I would say, is standard. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, minimum 300. Yeah. Um, anything lower than that that is pretty low res, then we have to go in and make something. Um, headshot, director's bio, a director's statement sometimes. People find that interesting. The more information we have, the more we can put up on our website. And that also helps generate interest in your film as well. A synopsis helps. Yeah, too, I was going to say synopsis. Yeah. Synopsis. yeah, like it's it's frustrating when you get a film and you're like, oh, I want to program this, and like, how do I describe it? And yeah. I have to go through yeah. and write a description of the film. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd rather just we, have we've done that. You know, it's, like, it's better to hear it from the filmmaker right. than actually having us to go ahead and do it because we probably are going to get it all wrong. That's right. not <laughs> what I meant. That's not what, what I meant that? for that film. Right. <laughs> you didn't get my movie at all. <laughs> Let me ask. The um, if a filmmaker doesn't have an EP, EPK and he's probably a film student who doesn't know what that is, do you kind of judge it like, well, that's a lot of work for us, maybe we won't take that film? Or if the film is strong enough, would you still take it? If the film is, strong, the film enough, is strong enough, we'll yeah. still We're take it. That person we'll out, work yeah. with them. We'll work yeah. with them, we'll, we'll, we'll try to help them out a bit, make sure that they get us what we need and, you know, any questions they have, by all means, reach out. Yeah, and, and how receptive they are to comment back. Because a lot of times, somebody will send a film in, and then you'll be like, hey, you didn't really send us any stills or anything. Crickets. Yeah. And they never respond. Mm -hmm. How are you supposed to, you know, respond to that then? Yeah, there's, there's been issues in the past with my festival where you're trying to communicate with a filmmaker, and you don't hear from them for yeah. months, yeah. wondering if, that film is, if they're going to send you the deliverables. We had a film that we selected for this year, and we were trying to get a hold of the filmmaker to send us the film. Nothing, no response. Finally, just a couple weeks ago, they <laughs> sent us the film to play in the festival. Like that was in April. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. 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 Hey, here it is. You, like, oh. you have to give us more time than that, though, because yeah. there's a lot of stuff that we have to do in post. Uh, um, Voices Heard, we put, we put our films on disc, <clears throat> so we need more time. Than just two weeks before and the yeah. festival. Other other festivals put theirs on a <coughs> do the uh, hard drive mm -hmm. yep. yeah. process mm -hmm. where it takes longer because digital projections nowadays a lot of theaters have digital projection 2K resolution the DCPs and yeah and when you do that hard drive conversion you're you're basically um, doing the highest res possible of your film so it looks good in 2K. And it takes a long time to convert that film, put on there, and then you're, you're, <coughs> you have one film, think of a festival that has 40, 50 films as well, too. So a lot of your higher end film festivals are going to have that, and you need a lot of lead time to do something like that. I, I think thinking then, as well as the promotional aspect of things, how can you promote a film that you just got in then? Right. It's like mm -hmm. your, all your promotional materials are lined up, and then somebody's like, hey, here's my piece. And we, uh, my festival, we really try to accommodate people, but you've got to reach a point where it's like, hey, we can't, we can't bend over backwards anymore. We're starting to break. Mm -hmm. um, you're not mm -hmm. going to get the proper amount of promotion that you could. We can't fit you in the booklet anymore, because those booklets, you have to design and get them ready and printed yeah. before things come out. There's a lot of stuff that comes into play. Let's, uh, this might move into another segment here. Well, we, uh, let me ask you something. Are we going to do uh, audience questions? Yeah, let's do it after. We'll do it after? after. Okay. Um, Just wondering. <laughs> um, with that, 
how do you program your vessels? What guidelines do you have with, with your vessels, Hugo? Um, well, we're looking for exciting work that we don't think is going to like screen at other festivals locally. Um, there is kind of an underground film circuit uh, where they kind of, you know, there's the San Diego Underground Film Festival, Melbourne, Chicago. Uh, so they, they do kind of travel around. Um, we don't necessarily look at the uh, like screening history or anything until after we've actually done our selections. Um, but like we're looking for exciting things that like fit the underground kind of uh, ethos. So like things that have been self-produced, uh, things that have a clear artistic vision, um, and just uh, kind of more um, more technically, I guess we're using Film Freeway. Um, this is a change that we did last year. Before that, we had uh, kind of our own submission forms uh, or submission systems. And when we sw swapped over to Film Freeway, we kind of had our submissions double uh, just because it reaches such a huge audience. Uh, and I think we were able to get a lot of interesting films in through Film Freeway that we wouldn't necessarily had uh, received if we still had our own kind of uh, separate system. And that's just the kind of, uh, the kind of exposure that Film Freeway gives you uh, as a festival. Um. I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> Programming. Programming. So uh, with Voices Heard, uh, we don't really have any limitations, <coughs> really just you know, in, in regards to genres or experimental pieces or anything like that. Um, if, 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 a, if a film is good, it will get accepted. Um, but you do have stipulations. We do have stipulations. Um, Voices Heard, of course, uh, we try to keep it um, within Wisconsin. So any Wisconsin filmmaker is uh, more than welcome to go ahead and submit. If you have any ties to Wisconsin, we will consider it. Uh, but if you are submitting a film from LA and your whole production was in LA and nobody in that production was part of, ever lived in Wisconsin, we're gonna turn it down. Um, we are gonna go ahead and auto automatic disqualification right there. Uh, we also have our stipulation with our, with our running time, <clears throat> which is 15 minutes. Um, if you submit a film to us that is longer than 15 minutes, automatic disqualification, we will not even look at the film. Um, that's just, that's, we put our stipulations uh, very clearly on our Film Freeway page. If you can't read that, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the main thing is because it's a free film festival. It is a film festival, yes. And the submissions are free, so a lot of times when uh, filmmakers are sending out films to a film festival, they look, oh, it's free, and just send it. They film. just submit it. Yeah. Uh, film, uh, the submission rate for Voices Heard was, what, 326 films? Yeah, 352, I believe. Oh, 352. Yeah. And how many were disqualified? All of them. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like three, uh, 300. 300 and down, yeah, 300. Uh, and 50 out of those 300 were actually strongly considered <clears throat> to be accepted. Because they're looking at it and go, it's a free film festival, I'm just going to mm. put my film in. And not bother reading the rules or guidelines. And the other guideline is you must be a multicultural filmmaker. Mm -hmm. That's a, Yes, that's another thing. You have to be a... Uh, or whether, you're, you know, whether you have a, whether you're a filmmaker of color or a filmmaker with Latino uh, background or even a, an Asian LGBT, LGBT uh, yeah, all of those initials. Um, sorry, uh, but um, yeah, we 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 are always open to that. But yeah, you, you have it is a multicultural film festival, a film block. So we try to give those voices a chance to be heard, pun intended. Uh, so we keep an eye on that, and we will go ahead and we'll do the, the we'll put our Nancy Drew hats on, and we'll start to go ahead and investigate. Well, is this filmmaker from where they say they are? And so we'll find out somehow. We got our ways. <laughs> Chris and Stephen. We don't really have any stipulations. Oh, right. I think we should. Yeah, I mean, we oh, don't have God. like. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that. Um, you know, you, your film can be five years old, 10 years old, 20 years old. We don't wow. have any stipulation on like a made by date. As long as it's twisted and weird, we'll, we'll, we'll watch it. <laughs> I even though, yeah. even though we, we do offer Wisconsin filmmakers free submissions, we haven't really had anybody take advantage of it. We've had 
a documentary about the refugees in Somalia submitted for free, but mm -hmm. other than that, I, we really haven't had any. Yeah, with the yeah with our free Wisconsin, we haven't. I mean, with Film Freeway, you can set up uh, so like anyone that submits, it has to say they're from Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and I think that's really weeded out a lot of the um, so the issues. Iranian filmmakers. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. um, did it with voices heard? No. No. Uh, no, it didn't because we do have that set up. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe something it's, going on there. It's worked with uh, with ours. Like yeah. we haven't had any of the um, any excessive submissions with that using the free uh, Wisconsin submissions. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah, anything like you just twist it is really what it comes down to. Our um, that's all the stuff we look at. Um, when yeah, we don't have too many uh, too many requirements or anything uh, as far as submissions go. Obviously. Length is a consideration when programming. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get into that later, but yeah, um, don't make an hour-long short film. But yeah, yeah. like it's a, anything. Well, let's oh, definitely talk about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm say so. I don't know if we want to talk about that later, but that's an issue when pro picking a movie. But as far as submissions, we just we yeah, pretty much. It's a chance. That it, it's 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 also all about programming, right? You know, because you you're you're more than likely going to be able to put in, let's say, your stipulation is a 15-minute long short film, right? You can get a 10 minute long film, right. and then you have a choice between a 15 minute long film and a 10 minute long film. You're going to need to program one of those. Which right. one is going to look more appetizing? Right. I mean, 10, like, yeah. So anything over 20 minutes, like I, like I start rolling my eyes, like, oh, this is going to be a long one. I mm -hmm. mean, last year I think we had two that were almost 30 minutes. And, but I mean, if you're going to make a 30 minute and submit it, it better be an excellent 30 minute film. I mean, like, I'm not going to say we're going to reject it outright before, but. It's it's gonna take a lot to actually make it into the festival if it's a thirty minutes. It's got you. a lot going against it. Right. Yeah, we'll definitely touch on that topic a little bit more. Um, as far as programming Wildwood, we have um, we're now accepting through without a box and through Film Freeway. Film Freeway has been a really a, a big godsend to us. I think when they first hooked up with film festivals. Uh, on these automatic entry fees and stuff like that. They started with without a box, is that right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. now they've gotten, so that kind of had a monopoly on it a little bit. And um, yeah. now they've got Film Freeway, which is a lot a lot better in many ways too, but we still continue to use both of those. And we do in our stipulations have, you must be a Wisconsin um, citizen, or have been a Wisconsin citizen somewhere throughout the course of your lifetime, and then explain to us where it is and that same dang Iranian guy <laughs> sent us movies, uh, but he didn't even send us submission fee. He's like, hey guys, can you waver, waver yeah. the fee for me? And I'm like, dude, you're not Did even from get Wisconsin. An email like that, too? What's I going get, on here? Yeah, I, I got an email for that. Yeah. That's so weird. Um, it's the same, it's the same guy, of, I swear to God. It it's the same guy. There's a lot of Iranian filmmakers that have taken <laughs> some films. They, they have, um, issues with with uh setting money because the government uh, yeah i've heard that too i've heard that too yeah there's government restrictions on transferring money or sending money so i don't mind taking an iranian film i you know i've taken them in the past i i would prefer um this goes into waivers too but with with our um rules and guidelines of films is we tend to even though we, we um, say we are open to films that have premiered before in Milwaukee, we do tend to, if we get a film that we've seen play a lot in the area, we probably wouldn't program it. Because like, we, we would feel that it's like the audience has seen it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. there, there's a section in there where you can fill out where your film has screened. And if I've seen it play in like seven festivals in Wisconsin, it probably makes me less <clears throat> likely to, to pick a film like that because the entrance level in that film might be on the down end at that time they're sending it to me. And many yeah. thoughts on that. Well, and just back to programming for a second, Ross, when we, when we get our content in, we're gonna start looking at it and judging it as far as thematically where does it fit yeah is is it something that would be uh, family friendly 
So we're going to probably try to program some of those in the early session and look and slide things around that seem to logistically or organically fit together. Is it, if it's something from Ross Bigley, we know it's going to the late night session. <laughs> so we slide that into the late night session right away. And um, so we, we just kind of plan out our day. And, and traditionally, we have a lot of documentaries early. And then our, our adult films um, or our dark adult oriented films are kind of in the in the last session, things that might have a little bit more questionable content. And that's usually our most popular <laughs> session as well, because it's just like, yeah, it's so, super cool. And then you can go to the party afterwards. So that's super well, great. Um, we got a few minutes left. I just want to clarify on this, and then we'll open up to a few questions on the floor. With, with us, um, we don't take films uh, over 15 minutes anymore. We used to take films, we used to have the 20 minute cutoff time, running time for it. But over the years, we've seen that other film festivals have lowered theirs to 15, so we've lowered ours to 15 as well. And we do still program 15 minute films, but like um, Nelson and Chris have said, is that it has to be great to, to be in the festival because you're also looking at uh, you know, runtime of a film that's kind of perfect is seven to ten minutes, and if if your fifteen minute film is just good or all right, and I've got like three excellent seven minute films, I have to go with the three seven minute excellent films. You know, and that's so, that's that's not an easy decision sometimes. Yeah. Oh, where, you no. know, it's, it's almost like. Some of like cutting a short film, and you 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 know you want a scene in there, but you know you have to stay at a specific timeline, uh, time lapse, and you have to make those sacrifices. And that's the same way with us when we're trying to go ahead and set up a, a block. It's just yeah. this film is good, but this one is really good and it's shorter, and so it's, it's tough. You'll yeah. find that with other uh, festivals throughout the country too. I I listened in on uh, other festival programmers and. They're more receptive to a five, seven, ten minute film than they are to a 15, 20 minute film. And they, they say it basically is that they like it shorter. If they can program, say, eight, nine, ten films in one block, that means there's more audiences coming to see it. If, you, if, you're, if they're programming nothing but 15 minute films, that's probably three or four films. That's less chance of an audience. You're not filling up as many seats. And it's also a business decision that way, too, with a lot of film festivals. If you go online, you'll see a lot of programmers from New York or uh, Los Angeles talking about what they look at when they're picking a film. And that might be helpful, too. I want to I touch on that a little bit, Ross. Um, we have a limited window of time throughout the course <coughs> of a day. There's only so much time you have. For Wildwood, we have a 90-minute block of time for each of our sessions. And I want to, the, the Q&As, as far as I'm concerned, are significant. I do not want to sacrifice that time. And we kind of sometimes have to tighten it and loosen it. That's one of the best places where filmmakers can network and people can get a chance to get into that realm and, and learn more about yep. it. It's, it's, and it's something that makes it different than them watching your films on the, on the internet. Because yeah, that's yeah. something that you all have. So we have a very limited amount of time to, to program. And if somebody's throwing us a half an hour film, that's only leaving 60 minutes for everything else. There, there's not enough time. One of the things I tell filmmakers consist, consistently is if you want to get programmed into festivals, make a story that's three to seven minutes long. Three to seven minutes long. Well, how the heck can I tell a story in that amount of time? Well, how do commercials do it every day? <laughs> yeah. How do they? I've seen brilliant short films that are 20 minutes long that would be m amazing if they were five. Yeah. You can tell the same story in five minutes that this filmmaker's managed to stretch out into 20 minutes. And now I make films with kids a lot. And the purpose short of doing, doing short films with kids um, and features and television shows, but the, the thing that when you're working with kids is that parents want to see them on the screen. So you're making, a, you're making a 10 minute film 20 minutes long, intentionally, so that they can do that. However, if you're going to put that on TV, you're going to cut it, you're going to trim it, and you might not see Joey's little handsome face as much as, as the parents would like, but other parents don't give a damn about Joey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it, 
you have a better you have a better chance getting your film into a film festival is if it is like seven minutes long. I've heard that mostly from a lot of film programmers around the country. And you know, they're right. I've seen films that are in so many more film festivals because it's shorter than a film that's longer. It's so easy as a programmer to take a three minute piece or a five minute piece and plunk it into place. Because that, now all of a sudden you've got to shift all these things together and here's a five minute place that'll just fit perfectly right there. Yeah. yeah. Let's open this up briefly for questions and then we're going to end this panel and have another one right after this. Anyone have any questions? So Clifford was uh, is the director of Last Resort, which screened last night. <laughs> Voice of Sarge. Um, I have a question about, about the uh, festivals, like different um, areas. Like, they, um, I know with the Beloit and the um, one in Addison, the West Coast Film Festival, which is usually screened about February each time. Does that hurt um, when, like, when you all have like, the, the one feature film festival, like in September? Are you talking about if, us moving our film festival? No, no, like if, if you're already screened for those two, would it hurt chances? Oh, the if a film has been in there before right. ours, we do we do consider it, like I said, we don't necessarily say no to films that premiered before, but if it's played at a quite a bit of, in the area. In the area. You know, okay. you're, you're looking at it like, God, people have seen it. How many more are going to come out for it? Right. Our festival is a little bit different than some of the others. Like your festival is genre. Right. The, there are people who love horror films and they'll go to horror films no matter what. Ours is is filmmakers and our audience is friends and family of those filmmakers. And then it's the people who are interested in films. But primarily our audience is friends and family. If we'd seen a film play seven, eight places, you know, maybe three in the same year as mm -hmm. our festival, we kind of pass on it because friends and family don't really come out after that premiere and support it again all those times as well. Any more questions? Out of curiosity, what's the ratio of submissions versus what gets um, programmed? Um, Percentage-wise, roughly. I'll tell you this, our submission rate was 720 this year. We're screening 50 films. Uh, we get a lot of films that, we get way too many waivers. We give out a lot of waivers. So we're shorting our, our waiver system. We, we gave out like 200 waivers last year. So you're cutting into, into that. And I, I prefer to look at filmmakers who actually went through the submission process than the waiver process. And we tend to get people who've been in like 20 film festivals going like, hey, I, I don't have any more money to send. And I was like, well, you've been in 20 film festivals already. I think, I think you did a good job. Let me look at a filmmaker who's trying to get into a film festival. You know, Any comment on that? I know we're this is our fourth year so like it's been it's varied every year we've done it so um but I think last year we had like 150 I don't know how many movies but yeah it's you know I don't know as we're growing our ratio is getting smaller as our submissions are getting higher so it's hard to say from like our ratio standpoint but yeah it's definitely a lot of films to go through and a lot of tough choices it's one of the hardest I mean I love watching all the films but Trying to decide which ones make it or is one of the hardest parts of yeah, the festival. Is. I mean, voice has heard, like I mentioned earlier, we had 352 submissions. We blocked 11 mm -hmm. last night. So. And a lot of those were people who didn't read the guidelines and submitted. <laughs> yeah. right. That's that part, voice has heard is part of the, mm -hmm. the short film festival, so that 720 is also with that number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's added to that. So. Yeah. With, with Wildwood, we still have a submission fee. Um, so a lot of the films makers have to commit to, you know, putting some of their own dollars um, on the table. And so a very high percentage of them actually get a chance to be seen. We do reject probably 10 films every year just based on quality. Um, and then we try to 
we try to, uh, we feel terrible about it. Ultimately, yes. we never want to turn anybody away, especially the people that are starving and really trying to get their films seen. Um, I was talking with these guys earlier. If we have a filmmaker that's a first time filmmaker and their film is, is adequate, but it's not great, it's still something that we'd like to showcase because I want people when they come to Wildwood to see films that make them go, holy crap, that was made in the state of Wisconsin? I could never do that, that's amazing. But then on the same token, I want them to see something to go, you know what, I could probably do a story almost that good. Let's, I wanna make a story, because I want people to be inspired as filmmakers, because I truly believe that every single person in this room, every person that we meet, has a story that's unique to them that if they could share with the world, it'd be a better place. Yeah. So, for sure. And I think uh, just this past uh, spring, we ended up showing about 15 to 20 percent of the submissions that we got for the Milwaukee Underground Film Festival, and that's just because we moved over to Film Freeway and kind of, you know, everything exploded for us. <laughs> I think the, the last thing we were going to talk about and this is an important subject, which I probably should have brought this up earlier, but the flow of the conversation was different. Um, last year, the Milwaukee Twisted Dreams Film Festival uncovered a guy that was that created a fake film festival in Milwaukee. Multiple. Fake Multiple, film. yeah, he had about yeah. half a Multiple. dozen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why don't you discuss that? And I think this is a cautionary tale for filmmakers, and I think this would be a good good way to wrap up the panel, too. So, yeah, I was going through, actually, one of our filmmaker friends actually had uh, submitted a film to our festival, posted that he was giving, uh, like, oh, he got accepted to another film festival in Milwaukee, and I was like, well, I hadn't heard of that one before. And I started looking at it, and it turned out that it was, um, like this guy that wasn't even from Milwaukee, that everything was fake about it. And as I dug deeper into it, it turned out that the, he had a whole, this whole team had a ring of fake festivals. A lot of it took place in Texas, but you know, they, but because he had one in Milwaukee, it's how we ended up. Yeah, they were all listed it. on Film Freeway too. Right. So I guess those. as a cautionary tale, just to not to go too much detail, but um, as a filmmaker, look at to what film festival that the film festival you're submitting to um how many years has it been going on does it does the person in charge the festival director actually exist because that was the one thing we found like trying to find this guy like all he had is like one twitter feed that was very obviously fake so just do some research on festivals before you submit it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The easiest, look at location too. Yeah, like, yeah. The easiest thing is to make sure venues. the venue is real. Yeah. Right. The address you listed here in Milwaukee was for a dirt lot. So right. if somebody would just mm -hmm. put the address in Google, you would see it's not a real place. Yeah. And, and this this is a guy that was taking money from filmmakers. I mean, right. And he had no problems with that, and he wasn't going to show your film. Right. Because yeah, at the last minute, he's like, "Oh, we have a change of venue. It's going to show at this little town in Texas that." You know, Bay City, Texas. Uh, whatever. It was like yeah. this little town that like no one ever heard of. That was it's like a, in the town, of the a town of ten farmers. Right. Yeah. And that's where he was going to screen everyone's film. Like I don't think that exists. But so yeah, just a cautionary tale. Just do some research. research if you're a filmmaker. What film festivals you're submitting to? Um, see, you know, try to figure out if it is legit because there are a lot of scams out there, especially on Film Freeway. Yeah. It's a great tool. We love Film Freeway, but yeah, it, it does have a lot of scams on it. And uh, not that we're trying to shy you away from probably a brand new film festival that's trying to start. Right. Right. Uh, just because I know a personal friend of mine that has trying to start one in Watertown, and so this would be his first year. So just, just do the research, find out whether this person or not exists, whether the venue is real, uh, and just be careful before you put your money away. On film Freeway have reviews mm -hmm. systems yes. Too. They, if they've been around, they'll post photos from those right. events. Easy ways to look into if, if that's a legitimate film festival. Oh, yeah. The other thing, the only thing I want to say about the reviews is try to find reviews that people actually went to the festival. Yes. Because yeah. a lot of people will review, like, hey, this is a great festival that never actually went. So they're just saying, like, hey, they accepted my festival. It must be. A, they accepted my film. It must be a good festival. But so look for the reviews that people say they actually went. So you know it is legit. That's 
uh, caution detail about looking at reviews. One, one of the things, Ross, I'd like to kind of say and wrap up too is that I've uh, volunteered as a, as a Sundance volunteer for four years, so I've gotten a chance to understand how that film festival works. That's pretty wild, it's pretty big. Um, but the thing that I would tell you guys as filmmakers is develop relationships with the people that are doing these film festivals. Make connections, because a lot of the bigger film festivals eventually do solicit your material. A large chunk of the films for um, the Wisconsin Film Festival, for example, are solicited material. So they'll go out and they'll get that film and bring it back, and they'll even pay a fee to have those films paid. Um, so build connections, network. That's what film festivals are all about. They really, truly are. You're going to find your next actress, your next actor, your next director, your screenwriter at all these places. Really try to take advantage of that and um, wholeheartedly. Well, thank, thank you guys. And one, one last time, the Underground Film Festival is next April? Yes. And you'll start taking submissions October, soon? October, yes. Yeah. Voices Heard is, of course, next year. And yeah. I think the submission process begins next week. Next week, right after, yeah. yeah. Wow. We start next week. Uh, so. uh, send them in. Send, well, them in. send it in some comedies, too, because we yeah. love the dark stuff, <laughs> but yeah. come on. Twisted <laughs> Dreams is in April. April, yep. April 5th, 6th, and 7th. And you're taking submissions. All of our information is yep. right here in the book. Mm -hmm. Wildwood's at the end of March this year, and um, we would love to see your stuff. Yeah. And we've got uh, it this month yet that we could submit. Yeah. And the, the Chorus Art Film Festival is the last day is today. We have three more blocks of films, one more panel after this. And we are taking submissions for next year right now. <laughs> nice. No rest. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.